face-off is this. Ernest Hemingway wrote a famous novel about an American soldier in World War I who, while working with an ambulance unit, is wounded and falls in love with his nurse. The soldier deserts and goes to Switzerland with the nurse, who subsequently dies. For 10 points, can you tell me the title of this famous American Nicole novel? Nicole Andrew. Red badge of cards? No, I'm afraid not. Mm -hmm. McGee, can you take it? Anyone want to take a shot? McGee, smell the... Farewell to arms? You're right. A farewell to arms for 10 points. <laughs> we have a lanyard of 30 points. Now, this is going to be an audio one, ladies. We want you to listen to the musical selection that we'll now play, and then I will ask the question. Okay? <laughs> Classics. This may be a little problem. However, <laughs> let's try it. First question for 10 points. The name of this orchestral suite. Can you uh, give it to me? <laughs> no. A very famous ceremonial piece that was played originally. Well, we'll talk about that later. The water music, it's called. <gasps> All right. Now, for 10 points, can you tell me the name of the composer? I should have put that first, but I'll do it now. Brahms. Brahms? No. No oh, good guess. I, around that time was Handel. George Frederick Handel. And finally, for 10 points, the British monarch for whom it was written. It was specially written for a king. Anyone? George III. <laughs> oh, almost, almost made it. King George I. Oh. That was a toughie. Okay. Let's go on now to something maybe a little more contemporary. In this case, it's not really. It's a face-off and an interesting one. We're going for a lanyard at 20 points. Levi Hutchins, who lived in Concord, New Hampshire, was a New Englander with a Yankee conscience. He firmly believed in being on time. I mean, in punto for his job, every time. It was his firm rule to awaken at 4 a.m., whatever the season. Now, for 10 points, can you tell me what Hutchins invented? Nicole Mayhew. Blue jeans? Nope. McGee Hughes. Stopwatch. <laughs> Oh, close. I think he was thinking about Levi's for the blue jeans. No, in this case, it was the alarm clock, and you were so close. <laughs> and it went off just like that. We got another face-off. Not too many people know Levi Hutchins' name, I'm afraid. Face-off going for a lanyard for 20 for quick 10. To what part of the body does the adjective maxillary refer? McGee, smell the Mouth? No. Hey, Cole, can you take it? Want to take a shot? Anyone? It's actually the jaw. We have to be more specific, the jaw. Here's another short face-off going for a lanyard at 20. Who paid for the Statue of Liberty? McGee, smell them in. The French. That's right, the citizens of France with 10 points. Picked up 10, here's a chance at 20 more in lanyard in four parts. For five points each, identify the following nations or states from this brief description of their flags. Three equal vertical sections of green, white, and red from Italy. left. That's right. <laughs> okay, two, two equal horizontal sections. The red section above the white section. Or horizontal. I think it's Canada. I think it's Canada. All right. Canada? No, this would be Poland. Number three, red with a crescent moon and a star. The Soviet Union. No, close. I, I think maybe that threw you on the, um, the crescent. It's Turkey. Turkey. All right, finally, got a chance for five more. Dark blue with a seated white bird on it. The United States. <laughs> no, it's inside the United States. Remember, we said nations are states. State uh, flag of Louisiana. If we'd have said pelican, that would have really tipped it off, wouldn't it? Okay, we picked up five more points, however, McGee. We got another face-off. We're going for a land yap of 30. For a quick 10, when a person travels due south from Detroit, Michigan, what is the first foreign country encountered? McGee, Smotherman. Mexico? No, afraid not. Hey, Cole, yeah, and you take it. Canada. It's a little tricky. Look at a map sometime. Traveling due south. Curls around in there. Another face-off going for a land up at 30. At one time, they were referred to as peelers. For 10 points, by what name are these policemen now called? No longer peelers. They're called what? Anyone? Bobbies. Bobbies. I think it originated with a policeman called Bobby Peel or Robert Peel. We have another face-off going for a land up at 30. The 17th century chemist J.J. Becker, B-E-C-H-E-R, postulated that there was a hypothetical fire element that was used to explain the phenomenon of combustion. 
Its existence was disproved a century later by Lavoisier. For 10 points, what was the name of this hypothetical element? He gave it a strange and mystic name. He called it phlogiston, phlogiston. Another face off, before the Celts became Christianized in Great Britain and France, there were members of a Celtic order of priests about whom little is known. However, many mysterious legends have grown up around them, this order of priests, including that they were responsible for the erection of Stonehenge. Nicole Mayhew. Druids. You're right, Druids they were, for 10 points. All right, Nicole, you're on the board. Trailing by 25-10, you got a chance to pick up 30. If you can get all parts of this, you could go ahead. During World War II, three original documents were stored in the gold vault in Fort Knox, Kentucky for safekeeping. Remember, World War II, for 10 points each, identify these three original documents. Constitution. The Declaration of Independence, Constitution, and what's the Bill, Bill of Rights? Bill of Rights, okay. Yeah. Uh, the Declaration of Independence. That's one of them. The Constitution. That's two. And the Bill of Rights. I would have said that too, but actually, interestingly enough, Churchill sent the Magna Carta and it was stored with it. But you picked up 20 points, a cold classique. We have another face-off. We're going for a land yap at 20. There can be suspension, simple truss, continuous truss, cantilever, or steel arch. For 10 points, what are they? Hey, Cole, may you? Bridges. You're right. Bridges for 10 points. All right, you picked up another 10, and here's a chance at 20 more. For five points each, identify the following things that all have the word old in them, or as part of a phrase. Old is the key word. First, the church from which Paul Revere received his signal for his famous ride. North Church. Old North Church. Old, all right. Old North Church. That's correct. For five, for five more, the nickname of the USS Constitution. Old Ironside. You got another five. For five more, the most famous geyser in Yellowstone National Park is what? Old Faithful. Old Faithful. Five more. And for five more, and a total of 20 if you get it, General Winfield Scott's nickname. Old Fuss and Feathers. Old Fuss and Feathers. Where did you pull that out of? That's pretty good. 20 points. Old Fuss and Feathers. Old Hickory you hear about, and so on and so forth, but not much about him and his name. The buzzer is sounded now. we got a rapid fire coming up, so let's clear the decks for it. As you know, in rapid fire, I ask the question as quickly as the questions are answered. There's only one answer per question. If you answer correctly, it's 10 points. Incorrect answers are minus five. And we proceed accordingly, question to answer, until the two minutes are up. At that point, you'll hear another buzzer. All right, this rapid fire will be based on general knowledge of people, places, and things. The answers all begin with the letter D, as in dandy, all right? You ready? Here we go. Number one, a type of Greek column. McGee, Smetherman. Doric. That's right. Pretend. Hoover and Glen Canyon are the names of two famous... Nicole Mayhew. Dams. Right. Pretend. Where Britain's Prime Minister lives. Nicole Mayhew. Downing Street. Correct. A one-hump camel. Uh, uh, Dromedary. That is correct. Pretend. Trees that lose their leaves in winter are called... McGee, Smetherman. Oh, shoot. They're deciduous. Deciduous. Synthetic polyester. Is what? McGee, Smetherman. It's Dacron. The capital of Ireland is what? McGee, Hughes. Dublin. That is correct. Type of bet or betting procedure. Think of it. It's daily double. Infectious, tropical disease transmitted by mosquitoes. Nicole Vertiget. Diphtheria. No, it's dengue. Dengue. Suburb of Detroit, the Henry Ford Museum is there. Dearborn. Nicole Mayhew. Dearborn. That's correct. That's correct. Pretend. Door with upper and lower halves that can be opened separately. The two halves. It's called a Dutch door. Its chemical symbol is D. It's deuterium. Framework over an oil well. McGee, Smetherman. Oh, Derek. That's right, it is a Derek. Solidified and compacted carbon dioxide is called dry ice. Capital of East Pakistan is what? Is Dhaka, D-A-K-K-A. -K -K -A. Unit of measure for loudness of sound. Nicole Mayhew. Decibel. That's right, for 10. Former U.S. labor leader and socialist candidate for president. His name was Debs. Inland body of salt water between Israel and Jordan. McGee, Smetherman. That's correct. Collection of 100 stories by Boccaccio. Nicole Mayhew. Decameron. That is correct. Author of Rebecca. The novel Nicole Rebecca. Andrew. Dumarier. That's right. Badger hound is sometimes called what? Called a dachshund. Capital of Iowa. McGee, Breckenridge. Des Moines. That's right.
King of Scotland murdered by Macbeth. Oh, right on the link. McGee, bro. Afraid that's going to end right there, but that was a very nice round. And it's still a very close game. We're going to check that score. We'll be back in just a moment to talk to the captains of both teams about the school and what they're doing, and then we'll continue play. So stay tuned. Sunday on Public TV, join Carl Sagan and explore how our own existence is related to the cosmos. The lives and deaths of the stars seem impossibly remote from human experience, and yet we're related in the most intimate way to their life cycles. Then a wealthy gentleman returns to his love, but she isn't certain of his intentions, the conclusion of Pride and Prejudice following Cosmos. See the first program at 8 p.m. and the second at 9 p.m. right here on Channel 12. <laughs> We're going to continue playing in just a moment between these two teams, but right now... Spanish and French students just attended the Foreign Language Festival at UNO and to compete in individual and uh, group events. That's great. And the girls' soccer team is planning on starting practice in a, a week or so. They're out there getting ready right now. And... Uh, this past week we've been celebrating, well, had a spirit week at school in preparation for the for our first basketball game, which was last night. Oh, it was, huh? Mm -hmm. Already started in a basketball? Uh, Expect to do some uh, good yeah, things? We're looking forward to having a, a good season. We've got a lot of people coming back, and uh, I think we can do a good job. You actually uh, consolidated, in a sense, with Sam Barth, didn't you? That's right. Year? That's right. They always competed well, as did you, mm -hmm. so you should be doubly tough. One way or another, good to have you with us, Ford. Hey, Cole Classic, thanks for coming. Well, McGee School has been an institution in this city for a good long time, so we know about their caliber. And Madeline, I wonder if you tell us a little bit about what's going on now. Huh? Well, McGee is a small private girls' school situated in the heart of the Garden District. We are now in the process of renovating our library and have just finished our new art department. Our volleyball team recently gained third place in the state, and our cross-country team also got third place in the race they participated in. Our soccer team is off to a winning start. They are undefeated, and we are very pleased to be able to participate in Varsity Quiz Bowl. Well, sounds like you've got a good thing going this year, huh? <laughs> team we does have as to. well as the others. You ought to be in high cotton, as they say. And I don't like <laughs> you very much. McGee, good to have you with us once again. Please, McGee School. And, of course, a cold classic as we begin the second half of play. These scores sometimes can be deceiving, but if you're a varsity quiz bowl fan, you know that this is a close one. 115 to 75, which means, in essence, as we enter the second half, that you're only really a face-off and a lanyap of, say, 30 points away from each other. Let's begin now. With this face-off, we're going for a lanyap of 25 points. Now, teams, this is going to be a visual. So we want you to look at the television monitors in front of you here in the studio. We have two of them placed. And you will see a photograph of a winter palace called the Potala. The god king who inhabited it fled to India in 1959 with 100,000 followers after a failed revolt against Peking. Now China is angling to lure him back, and he has announced that he could return if most of his people were happy under Chinese sway. A question for 10 points. Name his holiness the god king. Anyone? McGee, Butler. Mal Sun Ting. <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. A go classic. It's all right. Nothing's funny in this game. You take a shot anytime you want it. Sometimes you answer it. This is a toughie. It's the Dalai Lama. The Dalai Lama. All right, we have another face off. We're going for a lanyap at 25 points for a quick 10. To what college bowl game has Tulane just been invited? They call Mayhew. Hall of Fame classic. That's right. Hall of Fame classic at Birmingham, Alabama. <laughs> Gold Class Seek has added 10 points, and here's a chance to pick up 25 more points. For five each, tell me whether each of the following authors was ever the recipient of the Nobel Prize for Literature. A simple yes or no will do. Number one, Alexander Solzhenitsyn. Yes. Correct, for five. For five more, <coughs> Rudyard Kipling. No. That's right. Thomas Hardy. Yes. No? No is the answer. Graham Greene. No. That's right. And finally, Patrick White. Yes. You're correct again. You got four to five. 20 points. <laughs> we have another face-off going for a land yap of 25 points, teams. For 10 points, and this is a sequence question, tell me what number is next in the following series? 5, 10, 20, 8, McGee, 16. 320. 
No, no, I'm afraid not. We'll repeat again. Break old classique for 10 points. Tell me in sequence, what number is next in this series? I've got a fly that's bugging me. Take him away. 5, 10, 20, 88, 16, 32, 11. Next number in that type of sequence. 22, I guess. It's a mathematical progression. 22? That's right. 22. It's doubled. In each series of three numbers, the next number was doubled as 5, 10, 20, etc. All right, you've got 10 points. Here's a lane at 20. The pentathlon is an athletic event composed of five different contests. There is a pentathlon for women, which is somewhat different from the men's pentathlon. For five points each, name the five events which make up the women's pentathlon. All right, we'll ask for an answer, Captain. Okay. Archery, uh, cross country running, uh, horseback riding, <laughs> um, shooting. Don't feel badly. I asked Howard Cosell and he said the pentath what? Uh, <laughs> this is a very obscure event, but it does occur. It's a 100 meter hurdles, shot put, high jump, long jump, and a 200 meter dash. All right, another face-off. We're going for Laniap at 20. The kidnapping of Patricia Hurst was in the news for many years. For 10 points, in what year exactly? What year was she Nicole kidnapped? Nicole Mayhew, 1974. That's right, it was, 1974. <laughs> That's the year she was abducted. You have a Laniap coming up for 20 points. In your arm, there are three bones. You can earn five points for each one you can name, and a bonus of five if you can name all three correctly. Yeah, humorous. Five for each one radius. and five more for being perfect. Humorous. And humorous. Huh? Okay, that's what's right. And the uh, ulna, radius, and humorous. That's perfect. 20 points. <laughs> we have another faceover going for a land of 30 in this case, teams. Marlon Brando was awarded an Oscar in 1972 for his work in The Godfather, but he refused the award. However, he previously had won another Oscar for a night. McGee, Smelderman. Streetcar Named Desire? No, afraid not. He Nicole did Andre. On the Waterfront. On the Waterfront, that's right. Picked up 10. He did appear, of course, in Streetcar, and I think he may have been nominated, but he won it for On the Waterfront. We have a land yap of 30. In 1943, two leaders of Allied Nations met in Morocco. For 10 points each, name these two leaders. And for an additional 10, tell me the name of the city in which they met. Remember, the nation is Morocco. 1943 is the year. What's the big city Morocco? Two leaders we wanted. Um, also the city. Churchill and Roosevelt. That's correct. And... Is that more? Don't know the city. The other city was Casablanca. <laughs> Casablanca. Oh, yeah. You got 10 points, though. A cold classy. Get another face off. We're going for a landing up at 25 for 10 points, teams. Tell me, what two cities the Santa Fe Trail connected? Santa Fe Trail. Nicole Mayhew. St. Joseph's, Missouri, and Santa Fe, New Mexico. Santa, well, <laughs> we're going to have to go to McGee. Is that correct? Anyone? Okay. It's a toughie. I, you think you were thinking maybe about the old Pony Express, which was a St. Joseph route. However, it went to the coast. Santa Fe, New Mexico, and Kansas City, Missouri. And I've learned something. We have another face-off. For 10 points, tell me, what do we call the process which, by heating, destroys disease-causing organisms in beer, milk, and other... Nicole Leon. Oh, fermenting? No, I'm afraid that's not correct. We'll repeat now from McGee. You must ring for recognition. For 10 points, tell me, what do we call the process which, by heating, destroys disease-causing organisms in beer, milk, and other liquids? McGee. Pasteurization? That is correct. Pasteurization for 10 points. All right, McGee. Picked up another 10. Here's a chance to add 25 more in five parts this question. Among the best-loved members of the animal kingdom are bears. Not so much real ones, but affectionately nicknamed people and things who bear the name, if you'll pardon the pun. For five points apiece, identify these bears, human or otherwise. First, a bear whose pseudonym was Mr. Saunders. What was the bear's name? It was Winnie the Pooh. All right, a bear named for a president would be... Teddy Bear Roosevelt. <laughs> we'll accept that. It's a teddy Bear. That's where they got the name. It's named after T.R. Affectionately known to Chicagoans as Papa Bear. Papa Bear. Bear Bryant? Oh, no, this is... 
This was George Hallis, who was the owner and everything else for the Chicago Bears for years. The bear who hates Qantas is what? Koala bear. Koala bear. That's right. Okay. And one more for five. The popular name of the configuration of stars in which is found the Big Dipper. Arson Major, the Big Bear. That's correct. Okay, you got three more. Fifteen points. We have another face-off. We're going for a land yap at 20. A geographical area in which a number of ancient civilizations developed is known as the land between the rivers. They call it Mayhew Fertile Crescent. No, afraid that's not what we're looking for. We'll repeat now for McGee in its entirety. A geographical area in which a number of ancient civilizations developed is known as the land between the rivers. For, for 10 points, tell me the name given to this general... McGee Smetherman. Oh, wait. <laughs> the Tigers and the Euphrates. That's well, we didn't want the river. We've got to know the name of the area, which is Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia. All right, here's another face-off. We're going for a land yap at 20 for 10 points. Supply the phrase that correctly fits the following pair of definitions. A person scoring three goals in an ice hockey game and a magician's sleight of hand. There's a, a term for both of them. McGee Hughes. Trek. <laughs> no, no. A cold classique. Uh, you had part of it. It's all Mayhew. Cat trick. We can't wait any longer. All right, another face off. We're going for a land yap at 20. Although we all know the words, it's easy to mix them up. For 10 points, can you tell me the name given to the imaginary parallel circles drawn east and west around the Earth? McGee, smell them. The latitude? That's right, lines of latitude for 10 points. McGee. All right, there's a 20 pointer coming up. McGee, name the trademark of the following persons or fictitious characters. What is associated with them in particular? All right, Yogi Bear, usually associated with what? Yellowstone Park. Mm, I think so, you're a Jellystone. All right. You got five, another five. Charlie Chaplin. This could be a couple of things or more. The cane. The cane, his cane, his walk. Right, right. Cane, baggy clothes, funny walk, the mustache. Any of the four. The Lone Ranger. What's one trademark? The mask. Right, that's good enough. <laughs> and finally, Orphan Annie. Um, her dog, her, the dog. Curly hair, gold her dog, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> <laughs> hair that looks like she put her finger in a light socket. But one way or another, we got three. Fifteen, no, four. Huh? Yeah, we got all four. Twenty points. Sorry. Twenty points for McGee. Here we go with another face-off. We're going for a line at 25, teams. Was Samaria thought to be the first civilization, first in existence in... And I'll give you a choice, 10,000 B.C., 3,500 B.C., 1,000 B.C., or 200 A.D. They call Mayhew. 3,500 B.C.? That's correct. All right, <laughs> We have 10 points. Here's a land yap at 25. As Sherlock Holmes is to detectives, the Beatles are to music. Beatlemania is now given away to Beatle trivia. Can be very popular these days. See how much you know about the lads from Liverpool, and you'll earn five points for each of the following you can name. First question is this. The Beatles manager, when they first became famous, he later died from a drug overdose. Brian Epstein. That's correct, for five. For five more. The original name used in Liverpool when it was just Paul, John, and George. Silver, Silver Beatles. No, it was the Quarrymen, the original name. All right, number three, the name they were known by in 1959. After that. Silver Beatles. That was the Silver Beatles. Very good. The drummer later dropped for Ringo Starr. Pete Best. Correct. And the original Beatle who died before the big break came. Stu Sutcliffe. Stu Sutcliffe. Boy, you did it right there on the buzzer. Four of the five, 20 points for a gold question. The buzzer shouted. We're going to tote up the final score. We'll validate it and declare a winner officially in just a moment. So stay tuned. World-class tennis players don't just fade away, they become the stars of the Almaden Grand Masters, great athletes of yesterday, like Vic Satius, Pancho Gonzalez.